Hello, hello! So today we're going to take a look at this classic modern aircraft, the Boeing 737. The 737 is a short to medium range narrow body aircraft which entered service in 1967. Now while the core design has remained consistent throughout the years, the plane has evolved drastically. This variant featured in FSX is the 737-800 next generation version of the plane, which offered many improvements, the main ones being a larger wingspan and quieter, more efficient engines. In 2017, Boeing will begin service of the 737 MAX generation of aircraft, which will succeed their next generation planes. So enough of the history lesson, let's jump in and have a look around the flight deck. So it's safe to say that there's a lot going on on this panel, but allow me to break things down for you. So what I'll do is start in the lower left and work my way across to the right. So the first thing we have is simply a clock, which also has a stopwatch function. Next up is our first glass panel, which is your primary flight display. Now just above that there's a couple of things. First you have this indicator light which says below GS, which means below glide slope. Now I just wanted to point out that while it looks like a button, it's actually just an indicator light, and you'll see a couple of these on the panel. The other couple of controls here cannot be used, so there's no need to worry about those. Moving across, we have a row of buttons for your various 2D panels. And then just underneath that, I believe these are your marker light indicators, but I've not double checked that. Below those is your multifunction display, which will predominantly show navigation information. This does display a horizontal situation indicator, however it will look a little different to what you've seen in previous aircraft. The controls for this display are up on this small panel here, but we'll take a closer look at that shortly. The next little section contains three backup instruments. You have an attitude indicator, an altitude and speed indicator in the middle, and a VOR and ADF instrument at the bottom. Moving across again, you have a couple of controls. The first one is an engine speed control if you'd like to set the engines to run at a constant speed. Now it's worth noting that this needs to be enabled on the autopilot panel above. Next up you have the auto braking switch and can set how hard the brakes are applied during landing. And finally a flaps indicator with a couple of other indicator lights there as well. Below that you have your third glass panel which will display a variety of information regarding the engines and also the fuel capacity. Now it's worth noting that this screen only displays this information. You cannot scroll through different pages like you could in the CRJ. And then finally on the right you have the landing gear lever along with several indicator lights. So above those main glass panels you have your autopilot panel here. And it's worth noting that you also have one important switch right in the middle, which is your nav and GPS switch. And then beside that you have the small panel for controlling your navigation screen. Now in addition to that, there's a couple of knobs which can be used to change the barometric pressure and also the decision height for ILS landings. Next up, let's have a look at a couple of 2D panels, starting with the throttle quadrant. So the first control I'll talk about will be these black wheels which relate to the pitch trim. They also have a little indicator next to them so you can see what the setting is. The next control here is the spoiler lever. Again, it has a couple of indicators. In the middle you have your two throttle levers. Now the two smaller levers are actually for the reverse thrust. In the real plane, I believe you would pull the small levers up to engage the reverse thrust mechanism in the engines. Just underneath the throttles you have two more small levers which are your fuel cutoff switches. And then one lever on the right which is your flaps lever. Near the bottom you have your parking brake here. And then you have these three red switches which are fire extinguishers for the engine and the APU. Now to be honest I don't know if these are modelled in the simulator but you certainly can hit these switches and light them up. The other panel worth a look is the overhead panel. So much like the CRJ overhead panel, this is divided up by smaller panels, each serving a particular purpose. So the first section here relates to your fuel pumps and crossfeed valve. The next panel contains a knob and a display so you can check how much power is being produced by the plane. The other switch there is the battery master switch. 
The panel below that is another electrical panel with switches for the engine and APU generators. Moving along you have a couple of small panels for the interior lights. One is for the cockpit lights and the two switches there are for the cabin. Up in the top right you have a couple of panels for anti-ice systems and underneath those you have hydraulic pump switches. Along the bottom you have exterior light switches on the left and right and the centre of this section contains starter switches for the APU and both engines. And finally a quick look at the 3D cockpit. So you can see that the layout is pretty much the same as the 2D cockpits. Um, you have a couple of FMCs down here which you cannot use uh, or flight management computers. Um, the throttle quadrant is all pretty much the same and you have your radio panels down in the bottom centre here. Uh, up in the top the overhead panel is a bit larger than it seems in the um, in the 2D view however a lot of buttons you cannot click on so uh, everything is pretty much in the same location you'll see a few extra bits and pieces in there but um, quite a lot of the buttons there you cannot click on so that's just one thing to be aware of and that pretty much covers everything for the Boeing 737 in my next cockpit guide I'll be looking at the Airbus A320 which was built as a competitor to the 737 so we'll take a look at that next time anyway thanks for watching take care out there and i'll catch you later